that there was an awakening a couple of years ago about the justice of God, not even that a year ago. And I, I, it just stirred my heart. May I just highlight a bit of it? And then if the Lord is saying, doing something else, it's so good just to flow in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In, Pro, in Psalm 89, verse 14, it declares, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. We mention the faithfulness of God, the love of God, seems to be the thing we mention often, and it is the outworking of His character. But the foundation of His throne is righteousness and justice. It's not established upon love, or His mercy, or His faithfulness. His throne is established in righteousness, based upon His word, and justice which is the outworking of his character in truth. We need again to hear the word of the Lord in the justice of God, even as he is called Je uh, Jehovah Mishpah, the God of justice. I know uh, so many of the names of Jehovah, Nisi and Jophika, Jireh, all those different ones of, of, Je of Jehovah. But very few know Jehovah Mishpat, the God of justice. And if we're going to see an awakening and a, a restoring, return unto the Lord, there needs to be a revelation of the justice of God because it brings about spiritual warfare. It brings us into laying hold upon the promises of God. It awakens within us who we are in Him and that which God wants to defend for his people. Even Isaiah said the Lord waits to defend his people. He is waiting for somebody to appeal before him. We must come before him and lay out our case before him. We have an advocate. Even the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the one that knows the very thoughts and intents of our own hearts. The need of our lives. And as a faithful high priest, how to approach the throne of God on our behalf. But he waits for us to move in this direction. There's so many things that are entailed in this, but uh, there is that marvelous portion in, in um, Job 22. I wish I could go through it. It's a study in itself. But I'm just going to take you to Luke chapter 18 because this is the portion that gripped my heart. For many years, I have spoken from this. And I thought I had the revelation. I heard a preacher just a few weeks ago speak on this. And uh, he didn't bring it out. Because he brought it out like most of us do. That we should not faint. But always pray and not be weary. And that we are to be an importunate in our prayer. But as you look at this chapter 18. And the parable that Jesus Christ gave. It has nothing to do with just importunate prayer alone. There is so much more involved in this, this parable. And when I read this scripture portion, when Jesus concluded and said, Nevertheless, verse 8, When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? That always troubled me. Why would Jesus say that when he comes back to earth? Will he find faith upon the earth? Of course. I would say there would be faith, but I recognize it had nothing to do with salvation faith. There are many more that are coming into the kingdom of God. It will be even at that time of the shaking and awakenings, many more will come. There will be salvation faith. And I said, well, what kind of faith are we talking about? Then I looked into it and the Holy Spirit was driving this home to my heart. What is it talking about? What is in the parable? It has to do with justice. The little widow woman being tormented by her adversary. She would not be allowed to be granted her wishes. She knew her rights. She came before an unjust judge. And when I looked at that phrase, I said, And hear what the unjust just saith. What is he saying? Turn her away. I don't want anything to do with her. But she persisted. What did he eventually say? Give her what she requests of me. But because she wearies me with her off coming. And I looked at this, I said, this has to do with justice. 
justice in the righteous word of God. And as I pondered this, I said, oh God, help us to understand this. Because we have become weary with the injustices that have happened in our lives. What wearies us more? When things have happened to you and it has worn you down and you felt there's never another day you can look at, another breath that you can breathe, another step that you can take, and you've been overwhelmed with devastation and you wonder, my God, what can this thing be? And the Lord says, I wait for you to approach me. For your adversary, the devil, has come at you with great force. But I will stand with you. And everything that has been taken, I will bring back to you sevenfold. For what the thief steals has to be repaid seven times. Hallelujah. If you can capture this, the church will be awakened to a renewed persistence in prayer. You will lay hold upon the righteous word of God. And you said your throne is established in righteousness and justice. Upon your word do we come. We make our appeal as even God said to Job. Decree unto me that which you desire. And see that I will do it unto you. What a mighty thing God did in his life. It's so detailed in scripture. At point after point. But I'll just highlight tonight. Just to awaken this within our hearts. Because it's burning in my own soul. The importance of this in our lives. Then when I was looking at this portion of scripture in Isaiah chapter 59. It stirred my heart again as I realized. That uh, justice is crying out in the streets. And as you do a little study on this. May I give you an assignment this week. That you uh, do a little study in the justice of God. I don't know when I have really preached on the justice of God. You mentioned it. But I, I don't know if I've ever done a study until this time. But in that 59th chapter, verse 4, it begins, None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. They speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Drop down to verse 8. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment or justice in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Verse 9, therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. Verse 14, and the judgment is turned away backward. And justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street. And equity cannot enter. And then we go on down for the cry of one who will represent us. And then I come to that verse 20, and the Redeemer, all of a sudden, in the hopelessness, in the blackness, in the despair, when there is no justice, the Redeemer shows up. Hallelujah. I am declaring tonight that the Redeemer is showing up. He's going to visit his church. He's going to visit with justice and righteousness. There shall be an establishment of truth. But it will come when again we stand in the boldness of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And declare the word of the living God. I want to have a word that stirs me so deeply. That I will be transformed. My sister was speaking to one of the men. And I don't know if he's here tonight. He's from our mobile area. And we invited him. I think he's out tonight. Are you out tonight, Roy? He is an undertaker, and he's down in our area. He assured me he'd be the last to let me down. But he, he is, has a heart for God, and he was out, and Norma Jean says, now I'd like it to be a little different. He didn't realize how different it was going to be this morning. Aren't you glad for something different? But Abraham Lincoln said he wouldn't give any time to a preacher who didn't preach like he was swatting off some hornets or bees. I like it. We need to put some fire in us. What's wrong? We got so dignified now that we're afraid to shout when you feel the glory hit your soul. Glory to God. 
Isn't it great when the presence of God shows up? All of a sudden you don't have to encourage. It happens. You want to worship the Lord. But again, hear the word of the Lord. Justice is afar off. But we're calling it back. Who will stand in the place and intercede even as a little widow woman? Why would Jesus in this parable choose a widow woman? One of total despair. One who didn't have all the benefits or the support of any family because she had no family. Here she was alone. But there's something she knew. She knew her rights. And that speaks to us. You may stand alone in that which you believe in the things of God. But if you know your rights in Him, you will stand as a daughter and son of God. And you will approach the great King of Heaven. The judge of all the earth will He not do right. And you come before Him. And this is so clear that if an unjust judge would grant unto this widow woman her request, the Master said, How much more will our heavenly judge grant unto us who have right and privileges to come before Him? I want to stand before God. I want to decree, O oh God, I have rights and privileges. It's not for me. It's not for my glory or my purpose. But it's for the purpose of the kingdom of God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. And when this begins to stir within our hearts, we'll stand up and take our right and see God intervene. And He will answer swiftly. Even though He tarry for a time, get ready, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. Nudge your neighbor and say it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I just speak that word. God is going to do this work. And even though He tarry, it seems how long will this thing be? I tell you, that He will avenge us speedily. That thing's going to happen, friends. There is something breaking forth in the Holy Ghost. God is setting the stage for a divine, supernatural visitation. And as it was this morning, the Lord said, I'm marking the places where they will allow my Holy Spirit to work. The Holy Spirit has been grieved too long. He's tried to get into our churches. We allow Him a measure of operation but there's a massive control in our churches today that we allow the Holy Spirit to go so far and no further but God will have a place and God will have a people whose hearts are unto the Lord and where the Holy Spirit is Lord of the service for where the Spirit is Lord there is liberty so I said this morning it's not only where the Spirit is but where the Spirit is Lord there is liberty. When that happens, things begin to take place. You will not have to worry about getting people right with God. The altars will be filled with people running to the altar. This morning we watched as the Holy Spirit just moved and hearts were crying out to God. Oh God, the burden, the cry was so great. And I, I lived in that for the few hours even after the service. The impact of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. This is what's to happen. It's to impact, it's to change. How many will stand up and declare, Lord, I believe your word. I've been in this situation long enough. There are times that we have put up with situations and problems. The adversary has daily harassed us. We come and try to receive our privileges and he beats us down. It's time that we stand up and declare, the word of the Lord is unto me. Healing, salvation, deliverance, baptism of the Holy Ghost visitation of God's glory, prosperity and blessing on our right hand and on our left. But we can live impoverished, beaten down, or we can come before a righteous judge who waits for us to come and say, Lord, I approach you on the grounds of the finished work of the cross. I stand in the redeeming work of Calvary. I stand in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I come before you, O oh God, and I beseech you this hour that you will bring forth your purpose and plan in my life, in my church, in my home, in my children, in my workplace, wherever it is, and see God intervene. Hallelujah. Lord, so I'm waiting for somebody. How many will say, the hour has come for me? 
I'm going to be as a little widow woman. You see, we believe the lies of the enemy. You're not worthy. You have done too much wrong. God will never receive you. You used to be, but you'll never be again. It's over for you. On and on we hear the words of the adversary putting us down. But the little widow woman didn't listen to the adversary. She knew her rights in the word of God. She became one bold in her spirit. She did not get weary in her coming. We always have to pray and not faint. I don't know how long it will be, but we don't give up until the time comes. And when God says now, it will happen overnight. Suddenly, the thing shall be. Glory to God. There's something to happen suddenly in your life. In my spirit, there is something happening. And I want to lay hold upon it in our closing moments. That you will lay hold upon this in the Holy Ghost. You say it's tonight. Something you have put up with for so long. You've had to tolerate it. It's been driving you in weariness. And yet you've tried to rise up. And you've become so weary you've given up in prayer. I'm going to stir your heart to rise up tonight. And to say come forth. Come forth. It's time in the name of Jesus to receive the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. If our pianist and organist knows that one. Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. How many believe the word of the Lord tonight? Glory to God. And I receive all things are possible. We're going to come and stand before the God of heaven. And see God do this great work. Hallelujah. Let shall we stand together. Do you know that one sister? The one, Lord, I believe all things are possible. Our organist knows it. Let's just sing that one. Let him just do that one. Lord, I believe. Oh, oh, Lord, I believe. Is that red key? Uh, what key is it in? C, key of C. Lord, I believe. Sing it with me now. Lord, I believe. For all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Oh, Lord, I believe. Now, there are those tonight. You're here. Before I turn it back to the pastor, you'll say, I want to be like that little widow woman. I'm going to step forth. Declare that tonight is going to be a turnaround time. There's some of you who've had a turnaround time in your life, in your business. Things are already turning for you. But then some of you have listened to the voice of the adversary. Day after day, we're going to bind the attack of the enemy off your life and give you a boldness that you will come with such importunity to lay hold upon God and see the victory for this hour. Hallelujah. As we sing it, I want you to come. If this is you, we're going to pray and believe God for you tonight. In Jesus' name. Lord, I believe. Oh, Lord, I believe. For all Lord, I believe. Oh, Lord, I believe. Oh, Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. Keep believing, oh, Lord. I receive, I receive. Lord, I receive, for all things are possible. Lord, I receive, Lord, I receive. Oh, Lord, I receive, all things are possible. Oh, moments for people to come. Keep coming. Come 
a little closer to him. Hallelujah. This is turnaround time. Glory to God. I want someone to stand with each one. Some of the elders and leaders come and stand with each one in agreement. If any to agree, it shall be done. Hallelujah. We come into agreement. Let this work be accomplished. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Once you lay hold on this, you get your teeth in it. Don't let go. God's going to turn it around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We need some more to stand with these that are coming. Glory to God. We give you a worship and praise, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's it, buddy. Glory to God. Just keep coming. You've got to get sick and tired of where you're at. The little widow woman would not be deterred. Tried to push her down, stop her from coming, come against her. The more they pushed against her, the more she persevered and pressed in. You're going to have things come against you, but you persevere. It shall surely come to pass. And I believe there is a, a word that's going to come quickly. It shall come speedily unto you in the name of Jesus. Speedily. Speedily. It's coming in my spirit. Speedily it shall happen. Glory to God. Lord, I receive. And Lord, I receive. Oh, all things are possible. And Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. Oh, Lord, I receive. For all things are possible. Lord, I receive. I want those in the congregation to stretch out your hand to these who are at the altar. This is a turnaround time. A miracle moment time for God to do something. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, we come before you on behalf of these dear ones that are standing at this altar. They come as a widow woman determined to see the great victory that will be from your throne of grace. Let them decree it tonight. Let them declare that this hour will be a turnaround time in their lives, never to be the same again. We come against all the spirits of darkness, those that have tormented their minds, those that have attacked their lives, their homes, their children, their business. We bind those powers of evil and command them to let go in Jesus' name. Speak the word, Almighty God, and let the judge of the earth do right unto your people, I pray, in Jesus' name. And we'll give you praise for it, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brother Bombay, are you back there yet? Would you come up here for just a moment? Did he go? He went. Praise God. Do you know that song, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. I'm pressing on the upward way. Where will I get that Brother Bombay for leaving? Amen. Do you know this? What Norma Jean knows is, you want Norma Jean to play it here quick. This is baby sister. I was looking for for Annette. Is Annette, did she didn't come tonight? Is Annette here? Yeah. Yep. That's I'm gay. Need every day. Still praying as I'm on. We're not getting rid of. Don't let my feet on. 